A suborbital spaceflight is a spaceflight in which the spacecraft reaches outer space, but its trajectory intersects the atmosphere or surface of the gravitating body from which it was launched, so that it will not complete one orbital revolution. For example, the path of an object launched from Earth that reaches the Kármán line at 100 km miles above sea level, and then falls back to Earth, is considered a sub-orbital spaceflight. Some sub-orbital flights have been undertaken to test spacecraft and launch vehicles later intended for orbital spaceflight. Other vehicles are specifically designed only for suborbital flight. Examples include manned vehicles such as the X-15 and spaceship own and unmanned ones such as ICBMs and sounding rockets. Flights which attain sufficient velocity to go into low Earth orbit, and then de-orbit before completing their first full orbit, are not considered suborbital. Examples of this include Yuri Gagarin's Vostok 1, and flights of the Fractional Orbital Bombardment System. Usually a rocket is used, but experimental suborbital spaceflight has also been achieved with a space gun. <laughs> Altitude requirement By one definition a suborbital spaceflight reaches an altitude higher than 100 km miles above sea level. This altitude, known as the Kármán line, was chosen by the Fédération Aéronautique Internationale because it is roughly the point where a vehicle flying fast enough to support itself with aerodynamic lift from the Earth's atmosphere would be flying faster than orbital speed. The U.S. military and NASA award astronaut wings to those flying above 50 miles 80 km, although the U.S. State Department appears to not support a distinct boundary between atmospheric flight and spaceflight. Topic orbit During freefall the trajectory is part of an elliptic orbit as given by the orbit equation. The perigee distance is less than the radius of the Earth r including atmosphere, hence the ellipse intersects the Earth, and hence the spacecraft will fail to complete an orbit. The major axis is vertical, the semi-major axis A is more than r, 2. The specific orbital energy E display style epsilon is given by epsilon equals minus mu two a greater than minus mu r display style for epsilon equals mu over two a greater than mu over r, where mu display style mu is the standard gravitational parameter. Almost always a e display style epsilon than the minimum for a full orbit, which is minus mu two r display style mu over two r. Thus, the net extra specific energy needed compared to just raising the spacecraft into space is between zero and mu two r display style mu over two r. Topic. Speed, range and altitude To minimize the required delta V an astrodynamical measure which strongly determines the required fuel, the high altitude part of the flight is made with the rockets off this is technically called free fall even for the upward part of the trajectory. Compare with Oberth effect. The maximum speed in a flight is attained at the lowest altitude of this free fall trajectory, both at the start and at the end of it. If one's goal is simply to reach space, for example in competing for the Ansari X Prize, horizontal motion is not needed. In this case the lowest required delta v to reach 100 km altitude is about 1.4 km per second moving slower with less free fall would require more delta v 
Compare this with orbital spaceflights, a low Earth orbit LEO, with an altitude of about 300 km, needs a speed around 7.7 km per second, requiring a delta V of about 9.2 km per second. If there were no atmospheric drag the theoretical minimum delta V would be 8.1 km per second to put a craft into a 300 km high orbit starting from a stationary point like the South Pole. The theoretical minimum can be up to 0.46 km per second less if launching eastward from near the equator. For sub-orbital spaceflights covering a horizontal distance the maximum speed and required delta V are in between those of a vertical flight and a LEO. The maximum speed at the lower ends of the trajectory are now composed of a horizontal and a vertical component. The higher the horizontal distance covered, the greater the horizontal speed will be. The vertical velocity will increase with distance for short distances but will decrease with distance at longer distances. For the V 2 rocket, just reaching space but with a range of about 330 km, the maximum speed was 1.6 km per second. Scaled Composites Spaceship 2 which is under development will have a similar free-fall orbit but the announced maximum speed is 1.1 km per second perhaps because of engine shut off at a higher altitude. For larger ranges, due to the elliptic orbit the maximum altitude can be much more than for a LEO. On a 10,000 km intercontinental flight, such as that of an intercontinental ballistic missile or possible future commercial spaceflight, the maximum speed is about 7 km per second, and the maximum altitude may be more than 1,300 km. Any spaceflight that returns to the surface, including sub-orbital ones, will undergo atmospheric re-entry. The speed at the start of the re-entry is basically the maximum speed of the flight. The aerodynamic heating caused will vary accordingly, it is much less for a flight with a maximum speed of only 1 km per second than for one with a maximum speed of 7 or 8 km per second. We can calculate the minimum delta V and the corresponding maximum altitude for a given range, d, assuming a spherical Earth of circumference 40,000 km and neglecting the Earth's rotation and atmosphere. Let θ be half the angle that the projectile is to go around the Earth, so in degrees it is 45 degrees times d, 10,000 km. The minimum delta V trajectory corresponds to an ellipse with one focus at the center of the Earth and the other at the point halfway between the launch point and the destination point somewhere inside the Earth. This is the orbit that minimizes the semi-major axis, which is equal to the sum of the distances from a point on the orbit to the two foci. Minimizing the semi-major axis minimizes the specific orbital energy and thus the delta V, which is the speed of launch. Geometrical arguments lead then to the following with R being the radius of the Earth, about 6,370 km Major axis equals 1 plus sin Theta R display style text major axis equals one plus sin theta R minor axis equals R two sin theta plus sin two theta equals R sin theta semi major axis display style text minor axis equals R sqrt two sin theta plus sin carrot two theta equals sqrt R sin theta text semi major axis 
distance of apogee from center of earth equals 1 plus sin theta plus cos theta r 2 Display style text distance of apogee from center of Earth equals one plus sin theta plus cos theta r two altitude of apogee above surface equals sin theta two minus sin two theta two R equals sin theta plus pi four two minus one two R Display style text altitude of apogee above surface equals left frac sin theta two sin carrot two frac theta two right R equals left frac sin theta plus pi four SQRT two frac one two right R Note that the altitude of apogee is maximized at about 1320 km for a trajectory going one quarter of the way around the earth 10000 km. Longer ranges will have lower apogees in the minimal delta V solution. Specific kinetic energy at launch equals mu r minus mu major axis equals mu r sin theta 1 plus sin theta Display style text specific kinetic energy at launch equals frac mu r frac mu text major axis equals frac mu r frac sin theta one plus sin theta delta v equals speed at launch equals two mu r sin theta 1 plus sin theta equals 2 g r sin theta 1 plus sin theta Display style delta v equals text speed at launch equals sqrt two frac mu r frac sin theta one plus sin theta equals sqrt two g r frac sin theta one plus sin theta, where g is the acceleration of gravity at the Earth's surface. We see that the delta v increases with range, leveling off at 7.9 km per second as the range approaches 20,000 km halfway around the world. The minimum delta v trajectory for going halfway around the world corresponds to a circular orbit just above the surface. Of course, in reality, it would have to be above the atmosphere. See lower for the time of flight. An intercontinental ballistic missile is defined as a missile that can hit a target at least 5,500 km away, and according to the above formula this requires an initial speed of 6.1 km per second. Increasing the speed to 7.9 km per second to attain any point on Earth requires a considerably larger missile because the amount of fuel needed goes up exponentially with delta V. See rocket equation. 
The initial direction of a minimum delta v trajectory points halfway between straight up and straight toward the destination point, which is below the horizon. Again, this is the case if we ignore the Earth's rotation. It is not exactly true for a rotating planet unless the launch takes place at a pole. Topic: <laughs> Flight duration. In a vertical flight of not too high altitudes, the time of the free fall is both for the upward and for the downward part the maximum speed divided by the acceleration of gravity, so with a maximum speed of 1 km per second together 3 minutes and 20 seconds. The duration of the flight phases before and after the free fall can vary. For an intercontinental flight the boost phase takes 3 to 5 minutes, the free fall mid-course phase about 25 minutes. For an ICBM the atmospheric re-entry phase takes about 2 minutes, this will be longer for any soft landing, such as for a possible future commercial flight. Sub-orbital flights can last many hours. Pioneer 1 was NASA's first space probe, intended to reach the Moon. A partial failure caused it to instead follow a sub-orbital trajectory, re-entering the Earth's atmosphere 43 hours after launch. To calculate the time of flight for a minimum delta v trajectory, we first find that, according to Kepler's third law, the period for the entire orbit, if it didn't go through the Earth, would be period equals semi major axis r 3 2 times period of low earth orbit equals 1 plus sin theta 2 3 2 2 pi r g display style text period equals text semi major axis r caret 3 halves times text period of low earth orbit equals left frac 1 plus sin theta 2 right caret 3 halves 2 pi sqrt r per gram Using Kepler's second law, we multiply this by the portion of the area of the ellipse swept by the line from the center of the Earth to the projectile. Area fraction equals arcsine two sin theta one plus sin theta pi plus 2 cos theta c n theta pi major axis minor axis Display style text area fraction equals frac arc sine sqrt frac two sin theta one plus sin theta pi plus frac two cos theta sin theta pi text major axis minor axis time of flight equals one plus sin theta Two three two arc sine two sin theta one plus sin theta plus one two cos theta sin theta 2 r g equals 1 plus sin theta 2 3 
2 r cos cos theta 1 plus sin theta plus 1 2 cos theta sin theta 2RG display style begin aligned text time of flight and equals left left frac 1 plus sin theta 2 right carrot 3 halves arc sine sqrt frac 2 sin theta 1 plus sin theta plus frac 1 2 cos theta sqrt sin theta right 2 sqrt frac RG and equals left 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 frac one plus sin theta two right carrot three halves r cos frac cos theta one plus sin theta plus frac one two cos theta sqrt sin theta right two sqrt frac r g end aligned. This gives about thirty two minutes for going a quarter of the way around the Earth and forty two minutes for going halfway around. For short distances, this expression is asymptotic to 2D per gram display style sqrt 2D per gram. As one can see from the form involving r cosine, the derivative of the time of flight with respect to d or theta goes to zero as d approaches 20,000 kilometers halfway around the world. The derivative of delta v also goes to zero here. So if d topic 19000 kilometers the length of the minimum delta v trajectory will be about 19500 kilometers but it will take only a few seconds less time than the trajectory for d 20000 kilometers for which the trajectory is 20000 kilometers long topic flight profiles while there are a great many possible suborbital flight profiles it is expected that some will be more common than others topic <laughs> ballistic missiles The first suborbital vehicles which reached space were ballistic missiles. The very first ballistic missile to reach space was the German V-2, the work of the scientists at Pienemunde, on October 3, 1942 which reached an altitude of 60 miles then in the late 1940s the USA and USSR concurrently developed missiles all of which were based on the V-2 rocket, and then much longer range intercontinental ballistic missiles ICBMs. There are now many countries who possess ICBMs and even more with shorter range IRBMs intermediate range ballistic missiles. topic tourist flights suborbital tourist flights will initially focus on attaining the altitude required to qualify as reaching space the flight path will probably be either vertical or very steep with the spacecraft landing back at its takeoff site the spacecraft will probably shut off its engines well before reaching maximum altitude, and then coast up to its highest point. During a few minutes, from the point when the engines are shut off to the point where the atmosphere begins to slow down the downward acceleration, the passengers will experience weightlessness. 
Megarock had been planned for sub-orbital spaceflight by the British Interplanetary Society in the 1940s. In the autumn of 1945, the group M. Tihonravov K and N. G. Chernysheva at NE-4 Rocket Artillery Academy of Sciences Technology on its own initiative the first stratospheric rocket project was developed by BP-190 for vertical flight two pilots to an altitude of 200 km based on captured German ballistic rocket V-2. In 2004, a number of companies worked on vehicles in this class as entrants to the Ansari X Prize competition. The scaled composite spaceshipone was officially declared by Rick Searfoss to have won the competition on October 4, 2004 after completing two flights within a two-week period. In 2005, Sir Richard Branson of the Virgin Group announced the creation of Virgin Galactic and his plans for a nine-seat capacity spaceship to named VSS Enterprise. It has since been completed with eight seats one pilot, one copilot and six passengers and has taken part in captive carry tests and with the first mother ship White Naitu, or VMS Eve. It has also completed solitary glides, with the movable tail sections in both fixed and «feathered» configurations. The hybrid rocket motor has been fired multiple times in ground-based test stands, and was fired in a powered flight for the second time on 5 September 2013. Four additional Spaceship 2s have been ordered and will operate from the new Spaceport America. Commercial flights carrying passengers were expected in 2014, but became cancelled due to the disaster during SS-2PF04 flight. Branson stated, We are going to learn from what went wrong, discover how we can improve safety and performance and then move forwards together. Scientific experiments. A major use of sub-orbital vehicles today are as scientific-sounding rockets. Scientific sub-orbital flights began in the 1920s when Robert H. Goddard launched the first liquid-fueled rockets, however they did not reach space altitude. In the late 1940s, captured German V-2 ballistic missiles were converted into V-2-sounding rockets which helped lay the foundation for modern-sounding rockets. Today there are dozens of different sounding rockets on the market, from a variety of suppliers in various countries. Typically, researchers wish to conduct experiments in microgravity or above the atmosphere. topic suborbital transportation research such as that done for the X20 dinosaur project suggests that a semi ballistic suborbital flight could travel from Europe to North America in less than an hour however the size of rocket relative to the payload necessary to achieve this is similar to an ICBM ICBMs have delta Vs somewhat less than orbital, and therefore would be somewhat cheaper than the costs for reaching orbit, but the difference is not large, thus due to the high cost, this is likely to be initially limited to high value, very high urgency cargo such as courier flights, or as the ultimate business jet, or possibly as an extreme sport, or for military fast response. The Spaceliner is a hypersonic suborbital spaceplane concept that could transport 50 passengers from Australia to Europe in 90 minutes or 100 passengers from Europe to California in 60 minutes. The main challenge lies in increasing the reliability of the different components, particularly the engines, in order to make the use for passenger transportation on a daily basis possible. SpaceX is planning to use its BFR launch vehicle as a sub-orbital point-to-point transport. Topic: 
notable unmanned suborbital spaceflights. The first suborbital space flight was in June 1944, when a V-2 test rocket launched from Peenemünde in Germany reached 189 km altitude. Bumper 5, a two-stage rocket launched from the White Sands Proving Grounds on 24 February 1949 the upper stage reached an altitude of 248 miles and a speed of 7,553 feet per second 2,300 meters per second approximately, which is nearly Mach 7. USSR Energia, 1986, Polyuse payload failed to reach orbit, this was the most massive object launched into sub-orbital spaceflight to date. <laughs> Manned sub-orbital spaceflights Above at least 100 km in altitude Topic: Future of manned suborbital spaceflight. Private companies such as Virgin Galactic, Armadillo Aerospace, reinvented as Exos Aerospace, Airbus, Blue Origin, and Maston Space Systems are taking an interest in suborbital spaceflight, due in part to ventures like the Ansari X Prize. NASA and others are experimenting with scramjet-based hypersonic aircraft which may well be used with flight profiles that qualify as sub-orbital spaceflight. Non-profit entities like ARCASPACE and Copenhagen suborbitals also attempt rocket-based launches. Topic: See also Canadian Arrow Corona DH-1 rocket Interorbital systems Land of the Giants List of rocket launch sites Lunar Lander Challenge McDonnell Douglas DCX Office of Commercial Space Transportation Project Morpheus NASA program to continue developing ALHAT and Q landers Quad rocket Reusable vehicle testing program by JAXA Rocketplane XP Spaceport SpaceX reusable launch system development program Supersonic transport XCOR links